Man, that's realistic. That's good acting. Alright. I don't know if that had to be like 20 minutes, but we got there in the end. I swear to god, if we get to the end of this and none of that story was actually relevant, I'm gonna lose my mind. I was sitting there, quietly, taking stock of the entire story. If none of that was relevant, like 20 minutes of that story was relevant, I'm gonna be annoyed. <laughs> I'm gonna be very annoyed. Incredibly annoyed, one might say. I don't think so. I think this is real. Then... That's a real corpse on the stage? Desuhiko, this is where master detectives come in. We have to do something! Oh, no, 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 I can't deal with corpses. Yeah, what? Huh? Dead people's faces terrify me. I can't handle looking at them. You're a detective! Blood! What's with the blood? It's all way too horrifying. <laughs> I can't deal with gory stuff. You're a detective! You're joking, right? You're a master detective. But I'm not assigned to murders. I mainly handle undercover investigations and stuff like that. So, yeah, I'll leave this to you. I grant you the right to investigate the crime scene, rookie. <laughs> What? I, I, I'll use my uh, disguise ability and try to leave the panicking students out of here. I'll leave the rest to you. Uh, everyone, stay calm. Let's all move into the hall in an orderly manner. Yuma, what do I do? This is awful. Stay calm, Kurumi. That wasn't an act just now, right? That's not in the script. Cotton really coughed up blood. She, she's really dead. Who could have thought a real murder would happen during a play? First Aiko, and now Cotton? Is the school cursed? Yuma. It's a murder case. But if the peacekeepers come, they'll just cover it up again. Please, I need your help. Please investigate this case, Yuma. You want me to do it? Uh, got it. You're just doing what she says again? Wow, if you want to get on the flat-chested Uggo's good side that badly. You actively love murders. What do you mean? Your own reasons. Uh, busted. Anyway, it'll be trouble when the peacekeepers arrive. Let's search the crime scene before they get here. Okay. So the past, like, so quick spoiler. Uh So I recorded four hours. I, I probably like made a note somewhere in the previous, like I think two episodes now. I recorded four hours, and for whatever reason, the footage didn't record. My audio did, the footage didn't record. So I was gonna replay all of it, and just try to match up my audio as best I can. Which is fine for the story parts, and the side quests. The problem is, when it comes to the investigation, I can't like quite remember the exact steps I took in what exact order so I figure for the linear story parts and the side questing I can just I can just re-record the actual footage and just splice my audio on top of it for the investigation and um, like the investigation took like I think an hour and a half because there's a lot of back and forth for this investigation so I've already done it so I think it'll be easier if I just actually just redo the investigation I was splicing and any comments, like when I get to the editing, any comments that I've made that I think would be relevant that I don't make now, because I just don't remember what I, I don't remember everything I said, <laughs> I will splice them in, but to differentiate past me and uh, current me, I'll put like a little reverb or something, put like a little reverb on it, just so it's like the comments being made 
You know it's there. You know I acknowledge something, but I just don't remember what I said. So I think that's probably just easier for everyone. Apart from editing me. Editing me's got a lot of work to do. Alright. Yeah, there's a lot of back and forth on this one. Um I'm not sure if it will help, but can I tell you what I saw? Yes, please. During the performance, I was doing odd jobs in the wings. Aside from the theater club members, there wasn't anyone wandering about like an outsider. I mean, other than when Desuhiko jumped in right at the beginning of the play. Oh, yeah. Sorry about that. Well, that's part of the investigation, right? You can't see everyone from the stage after all. Isn't that why he went up there? So he could memorize all the faces that were there? Yeah, sure. Right. I think he just wanted attention. But setting that aside... Since she didn't see any outsiders, the only persons of interest are those within the theater club. I'll keep that in mind while taking a look around. I've done a few investigations already. I should be able to handle this now. Yet you were hopelessly reliant on yours truly until now. I see it's not your brain making the decisions anymore. And yeah, don't worry about it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think in that dress, I don't think he's allowed to let the other thing make his decisions because I think it would show. <laughs> the eyes are wide open from agony. The body is completely motionless. I can immediately tell she's dead. Though she displayed many expressions while acting, her face is frozen in death in the end. And the only thing, like, I, I didn't say this in the last recording attempt, but I find it weird how, like, uh, let's let's say I don't know. Say I like I've not pinpointed who the uh, murderer is yet. I have an idea, but let's just walk backwards. Aiko's death was made to look like a suicide. It was discreet and out the way. This one is front and center in front of everyone. Completely different, like, MO behind it. Like, it's insane. They could have done it discreetly as well, but they were like, nah, fuck it, everyone sees. Which is kind of silly, because it makes everyone a suspect. This isn't an act. She was struck by an abrupt and unscripted death. Um, was it poison? That's most likely the case. There are no external injuries, and given the circumstances, she must have ingested poison. This will be tough to solve if that's the case. I know nothing about poison. What? A detective who doesn't know his poisons? Don't tell me you're a poison virgin! Ew, gross! You perverted little detective. Get on your knees and apologize, and maybe I'll teach you a thing or two. How about something like, I'm sorry, I should know my place. I can't live without you, Shinigami. If she was murdered with poison while on stage, the poison must have been prepared somewhere else. I need to look for that while checking out anywhere else that seems suspicious. Don't ignore me, jerk. Get ignored, huh? Yep, it's a corpse. Yeah, we know. There are two glasses on the table. The props used for the duel of poisoned cups. I think this glass was supposed to be stored upside down on the shelf in the back. Cotton was the victim, but she's also the one who set it on the table. Maybe poison was already applied to the glass beforehand. Hey, do you know who prepared these glasses? Oh, it's the girls on prop duty. The freshmen are handling them this time. Do you know where this glass was before it was placed on stage? Props are kept in the theater club storage. This glass should have been in there too. The theater club storage? In that case, any club member would have access. Um, was real poison applied to the glass? I just thought it was applied to Sutton. 
Not the glass, but it was applied to the sign. Uh, there's the risk of being caught by applying the poison after it was moved to the set. If poison was applied, it would have been before being brought to the set. But on days like this, when there's an open rehearsal, props are brought out of storage right after school. The glass should have stayed on that shelf the whole time. After school... Which means it'd be even harder to apply poison before then. Yes. At the very least, the props in the set were fully prepared at least one hour before the performance. This file is supposed to have poison in it, according to the script. But it's empty now. It's dry and shows no signs of ever being wet. To be sure, the poison in this file wasn't real, and it was just another prop, right? Absolutely. It was always empty. The contents spill easily because of the loose lid, so we don't even keep colored water in it. Cotton just pretended to pour poison from the vial into the glass on stage. Then it's hard to imagine there being any poison inside it. I am going to try to, like, gun it. Because <laughs> I've, I've done this, and again, like, the back and forth it takes, it takes, like, an hour and a half. To, to, uh, spoiler alert. Because what we have to do is flip between three different disguises to speak to the same people over and over again, in the same rooms over and over again. So, there's a lot of back and forth. I'm going to try to gun it. <laughs> I'm going to try to fucking gun it. It's just grape juice. Might pour out the bottle and replace what was inside. Huh? We're talking four different outfits. Four different disguises we have to just talk to the same people over and over. I went to get you. I'm still a theater club member after all. Were both the wine and grape juice sealed before you swapped them out? Yes. I received the unopened wine bottle from a club member. I uncorked the bottle and poured the wine down the sink. It's a waste, but we can't drink it anyway. I mean, you can. <laughs> you can. No one's saying you can't. <laughs> I'm just, I'm, I'm not a fan of wine. <laughs> I'm not a fan of wine. I've tried white wine, I've tried red wine, I'm not a fan of, of, of wine in general. I just don't like the taste. But, I'm just saying, you can. After that, I went to the cafeteria and bought a can of grape juice. Of course, this was also unopened. I poured the juice into the bottle, then put the cork back. I passed the bottle to a club member, and my job was done. That bottle was then placed with the glasses on the shelf before the performance. I see. With so many people around, poison couldn't be added to the bottle after it was placed on stage. If poison was mixed in, it'd be before it was brought on stage. Not only is Aiko gone, but now Cotton too. Could this? I made a joke of, of course, the blonde, the blonde woman who always wants to be the leader is called Karen. But I don't know if I'm gonna splice that in. I probably will. I probably have actually at this point. But I just find that funny. <laughs> I need to find out if there was anything suspicious about them during the performance. Karuni was in the wings the whole time, so perhaps she knows something about the others. Before the incident occurred, do you know where Yoshiko was and what she was doing? I didn't see Yoshiko in the wings. She may have been watching from the audience. Oh, right. Speaking of which... During the performance, I noticed Yoshiko walking down the aisle. I thought she was coming back from the restroom. But I didn't see her take her seat. What if she wasn't part of the audience? Where could she have been? Kurumi, did you notice anything suspicious about Warana while you were watching from the wings? Hmm. As far as I can tell. Warana was just her usual self. 
she was listening to music right up to the start of the play. I think that's how she concentrates. Did she go near the glasses or bottle before the performance? I wasn't watching her the entire time, but if she did go near the set, I think I would have noticed. Hmm, I see. Warana was the closest to the victim. That's ample opportunity to commit the crime. But still, how did she add the poison? It couldn't have been during the performance, right? Wait, now that I think about it... Right after the lights went dark in that one scene, she went near the shelf to pick up a plate. Her back was toward the audience, so I couldn't see her hands. But she only had two or three seconds max. Could she have poured hidden poison in the glass in that time? Did she have any other opportunities after? The next time she touched the glasses was during the shuffling scene. But it was Cotton who moved the glasses and bottle. She also prepared the poison vial. And plus, after shuffling, Cotton was the one who chose the first glass. Given the situation, it'd be difficult for Warana to poison Cotton specifically. I like to imagine, like, while, while Yuma's going here thinking through his uh, monologue, Kurumi's sitting here like, what, what, is, what, is he, what is he thinking right now? <laughs> what's going on in that tiny little head of his? <laughs> she just, mouth agape, she's just like, what's, what's he thinking about? He's been silent for like five minutes. <laughs> It's the fact that she's watching with mouth agape. That's what makes it funny to me. She's just like, what? What is, what is, what is he thinking about? What is, what is the tiny boy thinking about? And now, for, I'm, like, now that I'm actually in here re-recording it, I'm thinking to myself, like, what other comments can I make? <laughs> what other comments can I make? Because, like, I feel like once you've gone through something once. And that's where Kurine was supposed to be. Especially because I've not finished the actual uh, case, so I don't know all the twists and turns. So I'm sitting here with basically the same information as before, so it's like, what am I really adding? Before the performance, did you notice anything off about Cotton? Well... I think she was more on edge than usual. She yelled at underclassmen who were late in preparing for the show. She also paced around restlessly. That's not just today. She's been that way since Echo's death. Maybe the whole battle for the lead role had stressed her out. But since she was murdered after Echo, she should be considered another victim. Nah. Nah, I said this before, I'll say it again. I'm not going to spice it in because I can just say it now. <laughs> you should never assume that, for all you know, she killed Aiko and then someone else killed her in retaliation. Just because someone got killed does not mean that they are solely a victim and they are not a perpetrator or a suspect in any means. Never, never, never let that, never let that fool you, madam. Just because she's dead now does not mean she did not do something heinous beforehand. Strange for her to be mentally unstable. The ones fighting for the lead role are Yoshiko, Waruna, and Kurume. None of them seem particularly suspicious so far. Hey, how long are you gonna keep this up? I'm so over playing 20 questions with this ugly chick. That reminds me, the lights went dark during the performance, right? The entire hall was blacked out. Wouldn't it be possible for someone to sneak up on stage and place the poison then? Oh, I hadn't thought of that, but I don't think it's possible. Why not? The blackout lasted for only five seconds. We measure it each time to ensure there are no mistakes. So someone would have to move through the dark get on stage, apply the poison, and get away, all in five seconds. Now, you'd think that'd be crazy, but that two cases ago, someone was able to move an entire train car within five seconds. <laughs> so, you never know. From the audience, it may be impossible, but what about from the wings? 
No, there are multiple club members, including me, in the wings at all times. While the lights are out, we are always on standby to support the actors. If someone went on stage, the other members and I would have noticed. I guess it's not possible then. <laughs> Even an amateur has more logic than you. I guess you're useless without a certain someone. Can't imagine who. Rockstar boy? No, he's gone. We're gonna talk about him. He's he's out there, he's out there living his best life. Okay. We gotta gun it. <laughs> I'm going to gun it. Gonna try to get this shit under an hour, hopefully. We'll see. The script describes the duel of poisoned cup scene. The character Natasha, played by Cotton, is supposed to take the wine and glasses from a shelf. After that, the glasses are shuffled on stage. According to the script. After that, Cotton takes the first glass, and they both drink at the same time. Unfortunately, Cotton's glass turned out to actually be poisoned. Kurumi, I was wondering about this script. It says, make sure the audience cannot see the glasses. Why is that? It's to make the result feel unpredictable to the audience. If the glasses are visible, no matter how fast they are shuffled, the audience can see which one has the poison. The script doesn't say anything about how many times to shuffle the glasses, or which one will have the poison in it. Exactly. There's no poison to begin with, so it doesn't matter which one's picked. You just pick any glass and act out your death after drinking. In the script, Hodden was to die. But... I didn't think she'd actually die. I see. Since the instructions aren't precise, both actresses don't know the results from shuffling either. She mentioned that the catwalk for adjusting the lights is up above. Are those the stairs to reach them? Would you like to go check up there? Yeah, I would. The spotlights for the stage are set over there. It's a lot narrower than I thought. It's pretty high up. Yeah. It'd be hard on anyone with the fear of heights. So you can move the lights as needed for the play. The table is directly below. Which means... You can't see the glasses getting shuffled from the audience seats, but they could have been visible from up here. I could find out for sure if I could talk to someone that was up here. I'm gunning I'm gunning it. <laughs> I am gunning it. idea of how things work around here. It seems certain Cotton died from drinking poison, but I couldn't find any clues that point to how it was done. Oh, stuck already, Mr. Pervert Detective. If you need my adorable angels whisper to help, maybe you should get on your knees and beg. What angel? You're a death god. <sighs> I shouldn't even pay attention to her. But she's right. I'm stuck. What should I do? Yuma, if you're done with the crime scene investigation, are you conducting the questioning next? Questioning? Aren't you going to talk to Yoshiko, Maruna, Kurene, and the others? Oh. Oh! Right! Let's go and talk to them. She's such a loudmouth. But how do we talk to them? 
I doubt they'll be too willing to share anything with me. I joined the club only recently, so they don't trust me. And you're a complete outsider, Yuma. Don't worry about it. Even though you're disguised as a cute girl right now. I, I love it. She has disguise. she has to add the qualifier. Maybe this can work if we use Desuhiko's disguise. She has to add the qualifier of you're a cute girl now. <laughs> not you're not you're just a girl. Not your dress as a girl. Your dress is a cute girl. She wants you to know that she thinks you're cute. <laughs> she wants you to know that she thinks you are cute. He could disguise as any of the girls and start questioning them. Peacekeepers? Aw, oh, they're here already. That woman, she was the one with that Yomi guy. I am the Amaterasu Peacekeepers Vice Director. The trusted right hand, showered with love by... Ah, uh, yeah, the hot one. Let's go. Martina Electra. That's a bullshit name. Uh <laughs> this this game is just Good bullshit destiny. names. You've surely done something reckless this time around. You know what I like to imagine. Looks, looks like she found out you snuck into a girl's school. I think this deserves the death penalty, don't you? I could be entirely wrong. But I like to imagine this is how Japanese Danganronpa fans felt when they heard the names of Danganronpa characters. Like for all I know, Gundam Tanaka sounds like an actual Japanese name. So is um, what's it? Uh, Nekumaru Nidai. To me, that sounds like an actual Japanese name. I imagine that Japanese fans probably looked at that and they have they had the exact same reaction as I do when fucking Martina Electro walks in. <laughs> Where it's like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> what the fuck? That's not a name. Shut up. <laughs> I imagine. I could be entirely wrong in pulling this out my ass, but like, it's funny to think. That's probably how how Japanese Zengarompa fans felt upon hearing all these Japanese character names. Mew Iruma, for all I know, that could be bullshit. It sounds right to me, it could be bullshit. Japanese fans could be playing this game and just be like, fucking, Martina Electro? Yeah, that sounds Western. <laughs> that sounds Western enough. Desahika Thunderbolt? Yeah, that could be correct. I don't know. <laughs> Who am I? That could be American. I don't know. <laughs> so... Halara Nightmare. Yeah, that sounds about right. What is that? What is that? <laughs> is that Canadian? Yeah, that sounds, that sounds Canadian to me. Yeah, sure. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> Yuma Coco Head. Yeah, Coco Head's a normal white person name, right? It's like... <laughs> For all I know. For all I know. How I'm reacting to these names is how Japanese fans react to the Danganronpa names. I could be entirely wrong, but that's my new headcanon because it's hilarious to think about. Um, there's a reason why I'm dressed this way. What are you doing? Hurry up and make the arrest. Wait, I can explain! Huh? What? You have no right to remain silent. You have no right to talk to a lawyer either. You only possess two rights. Confess the truth, and beg Amaterasu Corporation for mercy. Take her away. Hey! What's going on? Um, please, wait! Are you sure you want to try and stop Amaterasu Peacekeeper Vice Director Martina? Yeah, tell me. Why are you taking Kurumi? To arrest her, naturally. On the suspicion of murder. They're shit women. cops. They actively don't oh. try. It's, ama it's amazing. What? Why would I do that? We have reached this conclusion following an interrogation with a person of interest. According to them, you were responsible for handling the contents of the wine bottle prior to the start of play. It's clear you took the opportunity to pour poison inside it. Okay, but the murder took place 45 minutes into the thing. It was only grape juice! I didn't add any poison! 
Besides, where would she even get poison from? Ms. Martina, this was discovered in the chemistry lab. <laughs> oh, it appears my deduction was correct. The poison was right under our noses. Hmm. It seems to have been a particularly potent one. The label warns that even a small amount ingested can result in death. The bottle is unsealed, and some of the liquid is missing. There's no mistake. You secretly stole this from the chemistry lab and used it for murder, didn't you? I don't know anything about it! That bottle is way too big to be stolen without anyone noticing. What a worthless comment. One could simply unseal it in the chemistry lab and put the substance in a smaller container to take wherever desired. Which could then be directly poured into the wine bottle. If you're gonna pick a fight, you better have sound logic backing you up. This is the last time I'll do this for you. Hmm, there's a warning on the bottle. This chemical will react to oxygen in open air, rendering it harmless 30 minutes after the bottle is unsealed. Huh? After 30 minutes, it becomes harmless? If you think that's important, go for broke and try pointing it out. Um, I'm curious about what's written on the bottle's warning label. Warning label. This chemical will react to oxygen in open air, rendering it harmless 30 minutes after the bottle is unsealed. It has been 30 minutes since the murder occurred. If this chemical was unsealed at the time of the crime, it will have already lost its potency. Let us check. Nothing. It seems likely that this poison was used as the murder weapon. Which means the crime was possible only for someone at the school with access to the chemistry lab. However, this fact does not contradict her being the killer. Wait, no! I am well aware that many of Etheria Academy's students are children of those affiliated with Amaterasu Corporation. However, that cannot be used as an excuse to bend the truth. Criminals must be punished as criminals. <laughs> For that is justice. Now be gone. Any additional interference and you'll be arrested as well. Take her away. And dispose of the corpse on stage before it rots. Corpses spoil so quickly due to the rain and humidity in this town. Why? There must be a mistake! It wasn't me! That's right, she's not the killer! Please, listen to me! I warned you not to interfere any further. She swapped out the contents of the bottle before the play began. And the incident occurred more than 30 minutes into the play. If the chemical used in the crime becomes harmless after 30 minutes, then it's impossible for her to be the culprit. I see. How logical and beautiful. There is beauty in being logical with all things, much like the golden ratio. Like gazing upon a flawless art piece and the more delicate it appears, the more excited I become envisioning the moment I pulverize it! Huh? Logic is meaningless in the face of ultimate power! It is nothing but a glass ornament beneath an iron hammer! What's with her? I guess all the peacekeeper higher-ups are perverts without exception. Now, my soft and fragile-looking student, 
Your play acting as a detective is over. Play acting? If you intend to continue interfering with our justice, then you will be pulverized. Help me, Yuma! Hmm? Yuma? I've heard that name somewhere. No, never mind. I don't know a little girl like you. Play acting as a detective? She's right. What am I doing? I've mistaken detectives for superheroes. Justice is a matter of opinion. With enough conviction, anything can be considered justice. It's only an assumption, completely worthless and completely powerless. Hey, I told you all students must wait on the lower level. Stop wandering around and go join the others. <sighs> Kurumi was taken away. What should I do? Do I just walk away as if nothing happened? No, I can't do that. Kurumi believed in me. She said the detectives are heroes. I'm no hero, but I'm the only one who can save her right now. I have to do something. <laughs> the truth is still hidden. To discover the truth behind this case, and to find out who the real killer is, I need Desuhiko's help. I need his disguise ability to get information from the club members. Alright, this is where shit takes a while, so we're gonna have to gun it. Best we can, but probably not great. Oh, it probably won't be easy. That cutie who was with Kurumi. What are you doing here? If you don't go underground, they'll be mad at you. It, yeah. I was called for questioning, but now I'm heading back. Let's go together. Oh, it's fine. I'll be right there, so go on ahead without me. You sure? Well, I was curious. Are all the other theater club members also underground? Like Yoshiko, Waruna, and Kurone too? Yeah, that's right. Yoshiko is feeling pretty shocked right now. She's in the rest area because she wants to be alone. Waruna is with her usual friend group in the makeup room. As for Kurone, maybe she's in the staff room with the other club members. Ah, uh, got it. Thanks. I'll be going now. Um, teacher? I'm sorry. My student is distressed. So please excuse us for a moment. You okay, Yuma? I'm fine, but Kurumi got caught by the peacekeepers. Are you serious? What are you gonna do? Desuhiko, can you lend me a hand investigating this case? Don't tell me you want to keep investigating behind the peacekeepers' backs. I know it's reckless. The chief even told me not to, but this is something I have to do. You gotta save the woman you love, right? I totally get it. No, it's not like I love... My man. Usually, I'd help you out of sheer respect alone. But those bastards questioned me already, so uh, I can't move from this spot. Couldn't you make up an excuse to leave? Aren't you good at that? Yeah, I probably could, but I couldn't stay away for too long. Maybe I could slip out in disguise, but I thought I'd put them on high alert and make the investigation tougher. Then what should I do? There's another solution. I'll disguise you, so you can keep on investigating. You want me to keep investigating in disguise? 
Yeah, I'll give you a voice changer too. I'll leave this to you. But if this goes on for much longer, we'll both be in trouble. My disguises can't last forever. What? Really? It puts a huge strain on my body. I'm already starting to feel dizzy. Are, are you okay? Not really. But I gotta do this. It's all to save the love of your life. I mean, this saying I love her is a bit extreme, but... Besides, I'm a master detective of the WDO. I've seen plenty of dangerous situations. So, who do you want to disguise as? Tell me. And this is where we fucking go back and forth quite a lot. All right, let's 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 do let's do the quickness. Can you do it, Kurene? Uh, hold on. I'm reviewing my mental high school girl album right now. Oh, found her. She's the one everyone calls distinctive. I don't know how society sees her, but she's right on the border of my strike zone. I bet he'd be happy with just about anyone. He, he would. If they have a pulse, he's fine with him. If the picture was a girl. Okay, let's start. Did a student collapse over there? Oh no! I have to get there quick! I'm sorry. I need to go rescue a student. Perfect. I slipped a voice changer under your clothes, so be sure to use it. Oh, also, just a heads up, uh, uh, touching your own boobs won't feel good or anything. Yeah, of course. Again, I said this last time. Of fucking course. This man. Of fucking course this man would try that. Like, <laughs> but then again, I feel like everyone would. Just that, like... Pure reflex out of curiosity. And anyone, regardless of what gender you originally were, what gender you turn into. Hell, even if you're the same gender, but but the things are different size. I feel like you would instinctually just be like, wait a minute. <laughs> I'm not gonna touch them. We'll see about that. Perverted detective. I'm heading back now. Get going. Kurene is often alone. I wonder if I can get any information from the others. Anyway, I'd better make sure I don't run into the real Kurene. Uh, Yoshiko is in the rest area, Waruna the makeup room, and Kurene the staff room, right? A perverted cross-dressing detective appears. Detectives roaming around. All right, I am gunning it. I am gunning it to the exact people I need to talk to. We're not wasting time. Actually, did they give me detective points? I don't remember. Um. Yeah. They don't. Okay, good. Gun it. Absolutely gun it. I scared you. I want to talk about what happened. <laughs> Yoshiko? <laughs> she won't even look at me. Maybe she's still in shock from the incident? Or does she treat Kurene like this all the time? Hey, Yoshiko. Can we talk? Absolutely not. I will not speak to you. I told you it'd be this way. Huh? As I've said before, I refuse to even look at you. Please, go away. She really hates Kurene. Is there a reason why? Eh, uh, you know, women. I'd better leave for now. 
I'm not gonna like jokes aside this entire investigation unironically can be summed up as eh women am I right <laughs> this is hilarious <laughs> oh, I just find just open the door Caesar like mid step mid step like the foot isn't down back up <laughs> close the door <laughs> oh that shit's hilarious I'm sorry you know what no I'm not sorry it's hilarious wanted to just by being here you're a nuisance don't you get that F fine she really hates Corinne Karuni was right these two really don't get along it's draining just pretending to be Corinne I wonder if she's not affected by all this Also, I know I, I mentioned it in the previous one, but like the characters are like the um Do you want something? The actual like um picture that shows up next to when they talk. For the theater characters, it looks so strange. Like it's a completely different uh art style. For the three girls or well, for the four girls actually because one of them's dead but the four girls and the teacher the art is completely different oh so sorry and i don't know why oh hello Karine. is something the matter huh she's actually willing to talk maybe she's on good terms with Karine. oh great timing i was investigating what just happened you mean to practice for a role? You did say you wish to play a detective someday. That's amazing, Karine. You truly are a thespian. Right. So, there's something that's bothering me. What is it? I just handle the costumes, but is there something you want to know about them? Maybe you think the actors on stage could have hidden poison in their costumes. No, sorry. That'd be impossible. Why do you say that? Because I reviewed both costumes in the wings right before the performance started. If they were carrying anything, I would have noticed then. But what about after you checked? Like if they'd gone to the restroom or somewhere else? Then I would check again. Besides, both of them were in the wings the whole time. Oh, really? Though, they were performing the whole time, so I haven't checked their costumes since the play began. Well, if they were here the whole time, they couldn't go grab the poison. If that's the case, it would have been difficult for Warana or Karin to bring poison on stage. By the way, Karine, I still need to organize the costumes here. If you're free, could you help me out? It's hard to do it alone. Help organize the costumes? Wait, if I can use her to my advantage? <sighs> Taking advantage of a high school girl. You've really hit rock bottom. <laughs> well, will you help me? I wanted to have a little chat with you, too. Later. So can you grab me from the staff room? Later? When? Count to 100 in your head. I'll be done with what I need to do by then. All right. Well, I'll start counting now. One, two, three. I better leave right now. Now this is also this is funny and kind of cute. She's so excited to have like a friend help out. I counted to 100, Karine. Huh? What? What's going 
going on? I actually drags her. She is so happy to have a friend help out. It's kind of cute. It's also kind of sad. <laughs> right, I'd better check the staff room while I can. Oh, Kearney. When did you get here? This reminds me. Thank you for what you did. Uh, we're at the 30 minute mark. I'm trying to get this under an hour instead of an hour. And, well, hell, under an hour and a half would be nice, but I want to get under an hour. We're not going to make it. <laughs> we're, not, we're, we're 30 minutes in already. We're not going to make it. You're such a good amnesiac. You have a knack for playing along with no memory. Yeah, the part with the overlapping spotlights after the glasses get shuffled. It expresses how the two characters' fates are intertwined. It was all thanks to you that we decided to go with this presentation. Karine, why don't you take over stage direction for our next performance? Y yeah, that might be a good idea. Just to confirm, I was the one who suggested the lighting presentation on the glasses? Yeah? What's wrong? You're acting kind of strange today. No, I'm not. Club locker. Kurine's name tag is on it. It doesn't seem to be locked. This Kurine gal seems the type who'd booby trap her locker. <laughs> hmm? What's this? It looks like eye drops. There are so many of them though. Some for red eyes and for dry eyes. Is this something Kurine usually uses? It doesn't seem like there's anything else of interest. Two theater club members are whispering to each other. They haven't noticed me. Maybe this Kurine disguise has made me less conspicuous. So, who do you think killed Cotton? It has to be Warana, right? Totally! It's gotta be her! She can never read the room, you know? Like, she doesn't see the other members as people. We're all just stepping stones to her. She thinks she's the main protagonist or something. She basically treats everyone like side characters. I know what you mean. She wouldn't think twice about killing people. They're talking about Warna behind her back. The theater club really is on edge all the time. But even if Warna was the culprit, how did she get cut in to drink the poison? Well, it's gotta be at that one part. The part in the script where Warna gets closer to the shelf? Oh, right after the blackout! It's the scene where she gets the plate, right? I'm racking my brain. I've, I watched the scene again. I watched the whole murder scene again, but I've already... F it was a piece of information that I, I knew I was meant to f check. Because there is actually something in that scene that is fairly important. I forgot to check. So i got to rack my brain against it again. When the information becomes relevant here... I'll throw it up on screen again because I will look at it again because like I need to check something. Could she have added the poison then? Because it's not the smoke. Because like the, the last two cases have taught me that there is a smoking gun in every case. There's a piece of information that blows the whole shit wide open. In the prologue, it was the loop in the tunnel. In the second, in the uh, in chapter two, the second case, it was the paint being spilled over. There is a smoking gun. In every goddamn case so far. I don't know if this is the smoking gun. But. If it's as important as I think it is. It will be very important. Hmm? You don't get it? 
Hey, do you have a minute? You can hear me, can't you? She's ignoring me. I guess she's not gonna talk. I guess there's not much else we can find in the staff room. We better leave before Kurine comes back. That should be enough. That's all the information I can gather while disguised as Kurine. Kurine seems a bit... eccentric. But she doesn't draw a lot of attention to herself. I was able to get some information thanks to that. Kurine was focused on production this time. She was thinking about the light's presentation. The lights were managed properly during the play. It doesn't seem like she had a chance to use any poison. But I feel like I'm missing something. There may be more clues if I disguise as another student. I should head back to Desuhiko one more time. Uh, um, teacher. Oh, what's wrong? You look pale. I'm sorry, but my student appears to be feeling rather anxious. How's the investigation going? Who do you want to disguise as next? I want to disguise as Yoshiko. So, you want to be the star candidate of the theater club? She's known for being an honor student, right? So, you know all about her. Why do you think I wanted her on the school? Once I've seen the face, I never forget it. Just leave it to me. Totally bang you right now. If you're okay with that. I'd rather you didn't. Hey, hold on. That's I would much rather you didn't, sir. I'm a superstar detective. Social norms don't apply to me. I refuse to hold myself back. But we can save the fun for later. Go investigate. Yoshiko is supposedly well respected by everyone. I hope I can extract information from different theater members. But I better be careful and avoid. I'm looking at the timer. We're not gonna make we're not gonna make under one hour. <laughs> under one thirty? Maybe. Makeup room. Under one thirty, maybe. Under one hour? No. I'm still spy. I'm just, again because I'm I'm up in the air about it right now. I still am gonna be splicing in uh, my commentary from last time, but I just don't know how much more there is to add really. So I'm just sort of sitting here like, hmm, what should I say? Is there anything to say? Aww, I wish this would end soon. Oh, what should I do? I'm gonna get yelled at. What's wrong? Oh, Yoshiko, oh, I'm so glad you're here. Is there a problem? Yes. Well, we're missing a prop glass. A glass? You mean for the stage? Yes. You're the one who prepared it for our play today. Oh, um... Did I do that? Did I do that? Huh? Did you forget? We originally planned to use wine glasses, but their thin stems break so easily. So last time you bought four others, including the backups. Uh, oh, right. Two backups were on the prop shelf, but there's only one of them now. Oh, where could it have gone? Uh, speaking of, I want to ask if you're the one who set the glasses up on the stage. Yes, I was. Did 
Did you notice anything strange with the glasses at the time? No, they were spotless. We can't let anything happen to the glasses our actors use. I see. Thanks. I'm, I'm trying to pause the dialogue where I remember saying something, but I don't remember what and for how long. <laughs> oh, it's just a water gun. There's a hole on top for adding water. That's the prop we used in our previous performance. You did a wonderful job. Thanks. charge of the costumes you're acting like this is the first time we've met do you not remember me well people call me the ghost member all the time i'm here every day but no one notices me well at least i'm not as bad as kurane but she stands out a lot when she's on stage could it be she acts a certain way so she doesn't stand out on purpose? What do you think, Yoshiko? Uh, uh I'm not so sure. <sighs> she's quiet. Maybe she's not on good terms with Yoshiko. I'm alone for a bit. Um, about what happened. How could you show your face here after murdering Cotton? Huh? You're not supposed to be here. Listen, the peacekeepers are everywhere. So stay away from me, got it? Murderers should just. Wait! Who are you calling a murderer? Enough! I have nothing to say to you! Shut up and get out of here! That was intense. I heard they were on bad terms, but maybe she's more on edge because of what happened? On top of that, Warren thinks Yoshiko is the killer. Maybe there's a reason why she thinks that. Because women. Women be shopping. And ironically, this entire thing is just, hey, these bitches be catty. <laughs> That's all this is, these bitches be catty. Hey, do you have a moment? I want to talk about what happened. Um, Yoshiko? Hmm? What's wrong? I'm sorry. It's nothing. Excuse me. <sighs> she suddenly fell quiet. I guess I shouldn't question her anymore. She looked like she wanted to say something, but maybe it's something she can't say to Yoshiko. Maybe she'll talk if I'm disguised as someone else. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Hey, it's Yoshiko! What's wrong? Oh, it's nothing. What's going on? Is there something they don't want Yoshiko to hear? <laughs> Alright, Lesbonim, what up? Yoshiko! Why'd you leave me back there? I was so scared. Those peacekeepers kept harassing me. They're the worst. Lesbonim. Um, you're... I watched from above the whole time. I saw Cotton die. Look how tall, look how tall Yoshiko is, like, like she is mahusive, like, you, f you think Yuma sitting here like, yo, wait a minute, is this, is this how tall people see things? What? Yo, this is lit. <laughs> He's getting scared of heights, He's like, oh shit, I'm a fool. <laughs> Does that mean you were with 
Burning on the lights? I was. Why are you asking me this now? Then tell me, did Kurne do anything strange during the performance? Did she carry anything suspicious or do anything out of the ordinary? No. She was the same old unfriendly Kurene. She came to the catwalk before the performance and was there the whole time until the incident occurred. If she did anything out of the ordinary, I would have immediately noticed. Lighting requires perfect teamwork. Though to be honest, it feels really suffocating to be around her. Oh, I wish you were on the lights instead, Yoshiko. Lesbonims. Why do you ask? Oh, uh, no reason. So, Karine was just her usual self, huh? Yep. I never lie to you. Lesbonims. Remember the duel of poisoned cups part, where they shuffled the cups? Could you see that part from above? Huh? Yes, of course. Although the audience couldn't, I could see their hands moving from above. As part of the lighting crew, that was my most important scene, so it would have been a problem if I couldn't. Most important? Yoshko! You complimented me during the meeting about this, remember? It's the scene where we shine the spotlight on the glasses after shuffling. Uh, oh, right. <laughs> that, uh, how is it supposed to go again? It's the presentation where we use two spotlights. Kurine puts a spotlight on one of the glasses first, then I immediately put another spotlight down. Okay, here. This part. It becomes a bit more relevant later, but this part, when it shines the one spotlight on the one glass, and then the other spotlight on the other glass. Like, the other one, the other girl mentioned it when I was, um, when I was, um, dressed up as Kurine. But, like, there's, there's a thing that we're gonna get to where that shit is really important. You did an excellent job with the Also, lights. standing like that, isn't that killer to like her back or so? Look at, look at that. Wow! <laughs> you complimented me! I'm so excited. I doubt I'll sleep at all tonight. Lesbonims! May we finally have that sleepover? <laughs> Lesbonims! <laughs> Alright. Maybe another time. Bunim. Les. <laughs> Burn him, Les. It's a club locker. Yoshiko's name tag is on it. I should open it and search inside. You're opening a young girl's locker? What you're doing is totally psycho. It's for the investigation. Give me a break. Yeah, whatever. I hope it doesn't turn into a hobby. Script and makeup items are neatly placed. Huh? There's a glass in the back. It's the same kind that was used for the play. What is this doing here? What else is there? Oh, there's a photo on the back of the door. It's a two-shot photo of Yoshiko and another girl wearing the school's uniform. Five bucks to guess who that girl is. Five whole dollars. Who is she? Five whole ass dollars. That's about it for the things of note in this locker. Watch there be one in each of the girls' fucking lockers. Like they all did it. Huh? <laughs> they fucking all did it. You're getting good at playing dumb too. <laughs> Are you practicing for the peacekeepers? You really are the top actress after all. Are you talking about what just happened? You really want to say that so loudly? <laughs> Don't worry. I know how to keep a secret. She seems to believe Yoshiko is the culprit from the way she's talking. Is there something about Yoshiko that makes her think that? That should be enough. Alright, one more. I'm looking at the timer. 
we are under 130 so far. I've been gunning it. Everyone around her seems to trust her. That being said, Waruna and Kurune seem to think Yoshiko is the culprit. Do they think she poisoned a rival to eliminate the competition? But I don't see her as someone who could kill. There was no info tying her to the murder either. I think I need to disguise myself as another club member and gather more information. Getting addicted to drag, are you? I don't think you're about to win any races. You don't know that. Teacher, do you have a moment? Oh, what's wrong? Are you feeling unwell? Excuse me for a minute. This student doesn't seem to be feeling well. How's the investigation going? Who do you want to disguise as next? I want to disguise as Waruna. Waruna, the other lead actress on stage. No, I kind of dig chicks who seem hard to get. Alrighty, time to turn you into just the kind of girl I like. You like every kind of girl, my guy. So creepy. Herbert you actively like every kind together. of girl. What does that mean? up with the investigation I'm getting way more tired than I expected if I stop concentrating my disguise will wear off all right I'll make it quick so please hold down the fort for just a bit longer I'm counting on you Warren is supposed to be feared by the other members I hope I can still get some information from them but I better make sure I don't run into the real Waruna. Uh, Yoshiko is in the ra If we go over one foot, I'm gonna be upset. <laughs> I'm just glancing at the timer constantly. Alright, let's talk to the honor ho first. Who is Rude AF? Hey. I said hey. <sighs> she hears me, but she's ignoring me. I knew they weren't on good terms, but I didn't expect the seemingly friendly Yoshiko to act this way toward her. Still, I need to get her to talk, or I won't find any clues. Hey, Yoshiko, why are you ignoring me? <sighs> You're the one who told me not to speak to you. Huh? I did? It's unlike you to act like this. Are you nervous? Anyway, stop talking to me. Go away. It's no use. Oh well. Hey, Waruna. You handled that poisoning scene with Cotton really well. Huh? I don't want to see you around here again. Was that a compliment about Warren's acting? No, there was some nuance. Like she indirectly accused Warona of murdering Cotton. So Yoshiko believes Warona killed Cotton during the duel of poisoned cups. like they're not on good terms. Look at, look at Shinigami. <laughs> I didn't notice her doing that last time. Okay. Oh, Waruna, I'm cleaning that right now. You'll get dirty. Um, I'd appreciate it if you could leave that alone. Oh, got it. Oh, Waruna, what brings you here? 
Sorry, I I'm busy cleaning up right now. She's obviously afraid. Let's take a break. Hey, could we talk for a bit? <gasps> Lorena! What's wrong? Um, well... She's really nervous around Warna. Maybe I can push her a little to talk. You should tell me if you notice something. Otherwise, I might get upset. Ah, oh, yeah. Fear. Sorry. <laughs> Fear. Um, That's how you control people. I noticed. What was it? It's about Yoshiko. I wonder if she wasn't feeling well. Huh? Why do you say that? I watched from the audience and noticed Yoshiko arrived to the theater hall late. Yeah, I saw that too. Yoshiko always watches from beginning to end, even for the rehearsal performances. I wonder what could have changed that. What did she do after arriving late? Well, she sat near the right edge of the front row before the blackout. She was still there after the lights came on. She didn't leave her seat once. She looked rather restless throughout the play. Right edge in the front row, and she looked restless. This locker has Warren's name on it. It doesn't seem to be locked. Going through a high school girl's locker while claiming it's for an investigation is what a criminal would do. Nah, it's fine. I'm not a criminal. I'm a detective. I mean, technically, we have, like, broken into a uh, school without permission. We are technically engaging in criminal behavior. <laughs> this is technically a B and e sir. Well, a training. It's crammed with music and theater magazines. Huh? Is this a diary? But it's locked. I can't open it. I don't see a key. Then again, I don't really want to peek into a diary. Let's put it back for now. I don't think there are any other clues. What do you want? Can't you tell I'm trying to blend into the wall as best I can right now? Don't talk to me. Um, it's about what happened. I didn't expect you to bring it up. Fine. There is something bothering me about it anyway. What's that? I watched the glasses get shuffled while I was above set. Wasn't it slower than usual? W was it? Why did you go so slowly? Um... I was just doing what I usually do. Uh-huh. Doing it like that makes it super obvious what you were trying to do, you know. Huh? <sighs> Whatever. Does she suspect something? Kurni thinks Warana took advantage of the duel of poisoned cups to kill Cotton? All right. All right, we're nearly done. Nearly there. Nearly there. Oh. Uh, it's meant to activate around that corner, is it not? Oh, cause we're not done in this room. What did I miss? Talk to them. Hey, can you talk right now? Oh, Warina, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm a bit busy right now. <sighs> it's no use. She won't talk to me. She seems really afraid of Warina. 
Okay, we're done. Now we go around the corner. It's the real Waruna. It'd be trouble if we ran into each other. I should hide. We are not making sub one hour and a half. I think I, I think I undershot how long the recording was. It two hours? I need to. I can't check. <laughs> I'm not gonna check the audio recording. Just me talking aloud. But this may be an opportunity to slip into that makeup room. You might be right, but it'd be terrible if I'm caught. I'm just talking to myself again. But if you don't grow a pair, you'll never become a full-fledged detective. Yeah, I need to double check the um. Shut up. I'm just considering audio recording. Options. It may have been two hours or more, because there's still one more disguise we got to do, which arguably goes on for a bit longer. Hey, back already? Yeah, I forgot something. Uh, where was it? I can't believe I watched someone die. I wonder where did Cut and Soul go? The true culprit's soul is deep inside the mystery labyrinth. Only Kurane could do something this scary. Kurane? What makes you think it's her? Because I saw it. Kurane. Stole Karen's script when it was left in the wings. Huh? She ran off somewhere with the script. Isn't that suspicious? Kurene took Karen's script? What does it mean? Is there a secret involving her script? There is. Karina, please stay by my side today. I'm so scared I could die. Oh, uh, I'll think about it. That was such a shock, right? Who would have thought Cotton would die on stage? Even though I hated her, seeing her die right in front of me makes me regret badmouthing her. Yoshiko has to be the one who did it, don't you think? Yoshiko? What makes you think that? I thought you'd agree, Warna. Yoshiko is the only one who could do this. She's fanatical about Aiko, though she thinks nobody noticed. Aiko? That was Kurumi's close friend who committed suicide six months ago. Which reminds me, we snuck into the school to seek out the truth behind Aiko's death to begin with. Maybe this incident has something to do with her death as well. Yoshiko never shows her feelings, so who knows what she's thinking. But I'm sure Yoshiko hated Karen. Karen got to be the main lead ever since Aiko died, after all. Yoshiko resented her. Which led to today. Well, how's that for some expert reasoning? Is reasoning? Then I'm his um, expert. So, is it true that Yoshiko adored Aiko? Are you kidding me? Everyone could tell. It was that obvious. Warna, you're really dense when it comes to these things. But that's what makes you likable. Rude, but fair enough. Also, didn't you need to go to the restroom? I better get out of here. The real Warner might come back any second. Thanks for talking to me. Anyway, I need to go to the restroom. That was super quick, Warna. Huh? Oh, we almost ran into each other. Should be enough. Okay, three quarters done. I think that's all the info I can give. Three well. quarters done. People are afraid of her, so they don't really talk to her. But Yoshiko and Kurne both seem to suspect Waruna. On the other hand, 
Warana's group of friends suspect Yoshiko and Kurame. Everyone suspects each other. Maybe everyone was on edge even before today's incident. But there's still no information that could lead me to the culprit yet. I was able to gather more intel by disguising myself as those three, but... I still don't have any definitive evidence that proves who the culprit is. I won't get much further just thinking about it, so I should go to Desuhiko for now. Um, excuse me. Where's the teacher who was here earlier? Oh, she wasn't feeling well and went to the administrative office. The same teacher keeps going back to the restroom, too. Maybe it's food poisoning. I see. Thanks. The office? Why at a time like this? This is... Desuhiko? What happened? Oh, it's you, Yuma. Sorry. I need a break. I started getting dizzy, so uh, I ran in here to get away from everyone. I try to retrieve my disguise tools, but I can't. I'm at my limit. I can't move. You're that fatigued? Yeah. Now that I think about it... This is the longest I've ever stayed in a disguise. Sorry for making you go. You don't stay in disguises trouble. that long, then, do you? You've only been disguised about for about an hour. Actually, not because it was in disguise during the whole. Here, so really, I should be thanking you. The whole um. I got plenty of good sniffs in. Okay, creep. <laughs> the whole performance. So fair enough. You've been in disguise for maybe like so, two, three hours, but still, like. Double investigating. That's not long. Oh I gathered some information, but I'm lacking something more definitive. Everyone has something suspicious about them, so I don't know who the culprit is yet. Speaking of which, the peacekeepers mentioned a past incident that happened at this school. A past incident? You know, the one with Kurumi's best friend six months ago? The girl who fell from the school's roof and died. The peacekeepers want to pin Kurumi with a murder motive for that incident. They're gonna twist the truth into something that's convenient for them. At this rate, Kurumi will... You'll save her, won't you, hero? I'm... no hero. But if they want to distort the truth, then as a detective, I can't let it slide. <laughs> and that's how you see it? You're already a hero, Yuma. There's still time if you hurry. Go and seek the truth that hasn't reared its head yet. But how? The guy snooping around about the first incident is a chubby peacekeeper. Get information out of him and figure out what they're trying to suppress. They won't tell me so easily. Hold on. There is one way it could be possible. It. I can get that information if I'm disguised as Martina, the vice director of the Peacekeepers. Looks like you now understand the power of disguises. Well then, let's get started. On second thought... Sorry. I don't have any energy left to disguise you. Huh? I think I'll recover if I take a nap. There's no time to wait for Desuhiko. I need to find Kurumi immediately. It'll be too late if I wait until the peacekeepers end their investigation. But I can't force Desuhiko to do a half-hearted disguise. It'd be way too dangerous with the peacekeepers. What am I supposed to do? Uh, aren't you forgetting about a certain ability? Oh, that's right! What? 
don't yell out of nowhere, the peacekeepers will find us. Hey, Desuhiko, can you lend me a hand for a little while? It lend a hand? Yeah, I just need you to hold my hand for a bit. Are you serious? But right now, you disguised like a girl. What if I start to have feelings? Shut up. <laughs> Now's not the time for jokes. Hurry, please. Jeez, what's going on? What is this weird feeling? Is this... Love? No! It's a long story, but it's the forte I gained in exchange for my memories. You see, now that... You could have just said it's my forte. Exchange my memories part, that muddies the water for anyone listening to you. Just holding hands will allow me to use another person's forte. Are you serious? You actually have a forte? Let me borrow your disguise tools. How does it look? Wow! That's the perfect disguise! Did you really do this, Yuma? You never told me you had such an amazing power! I'm surprised there was a peacekeeper uniform in your bag. You're so well prepared, Desuhiko. Wait, but we're holding hands. How'd you put your arm through the sleeve? Don't worry about it. Anyway, the disguise is over, so we can let go now. You said a chubby peacekeeper was investigating the past incident? I'm going to go talk to him. And with that perfect disguise, there's so much more you can do. Right. You stay here and rest. I'll resume the investigation. Alright. The way she runs is so funny. Like, I don't know if she actually runs like this or if he's making it up, but like, look, look at how he makes her run. When we get back to the game. Okay, it makes her run. Kind of dainty, which is funny. But also, because of the hand doing that on that side, look how it looks like from behind with the cape. <laughs> it looks so silly. It looks ridiculously silly. Alright, Chopster, what you got for me? You there. Do you have a moment? Vice Director Martina! Is it time for my... Punishment? Punishment? Anyway, were you the one investigating the Ico case half a year ago? Yes, that's correct! Is it time for my punishment? I need to confirm a few things. Can you tell me what you've discovered so far? Gladly! <clears throat> Ico's body was discovered behind the school building in the flower bed after class. She was bleeding from an injury to her head. This is believed to be the cause of death. The body was not wearing shoes on either foot. The shoes were then discovered on the roof of the school building, set together neatly. This is why it was deemed a suicide via jumping off the roof. Uh, uh, here is a photo from the scene. The fact that her shoes are muddy suggests the fact that actually she was pushed off beforehand, died, and then someone took her shoes and then went back up there and left them there. Huh? Got him. She heard something fall and went to check the flower bed. There she discovered Iko on the ground. That is what she testified. Iko was considered the star of the theater club, but apparently she worried about her future goals. And by the way, this is the last photo of Aiko prior to her death. So this is Aiko. I 
I see. Thank you for the report. Continue your investigation. Yes, ma'am. Oh, but what about my punishment? Um, uh, be gone. <laughs> yeah, be, be gone. <laughs> Degenerate. What's with the punishment thing? Don't worry about it. This type of woman brings it out of people. Look at Mitsuru from uh, Persona 3. It just sort of happens. Some people, they're not built strong enough to, to withstand what, what this type of woman does to a man. Anyway, I got what I came for. I should keep investigating. But where to go? Uh, uh, hey, wh what are you doing? Cut it out! Why are you getting in the way of my investigation? Oh wait, the chemistry lab. Besides, we're how to get poisoned. How is Shinigami both like incredibly stupid, but at the same time also very on point when it comes to investigations? Like she does not understand basic logic, but at the same time. She like has, she's a deaf hand when it comes to investigating murders. Also, one thing I noticed: memory fragments don't uh, reset. So, like, there's one here. There was one at the gate for the school. So, yeah, memory fragments they, they carry over, which is fine. Miss Martina, was there something insufficient about our investigation? Had you told me, I would have verified myself. Thank you for your diligence. Tell me, do you have the results from testing for poison? Yes, as I've reported to you already. The poison was only found on the victim's glass. Only the victims? What about the bottle or the other glass? None. No traces have been found on those. And, as you've instructed, this information is currently being kept from the official report. I see. Good work. The poison was only on Cotton's glass? How was that possible? Dropper is used in the lab, but these still look new. Maybe this is the bottle of poison discovered by the peacekeepers that was used for the murder. They'd taken it out for the investigation. Did they put it back because they were done? The report mentioned the bottle's lid was unsealed. The bottle is too big to easily conceal. Taking this to the theater hall would attract attention. If that's the case, maybe its contents were poured into another container. According to the label on this bottle, this chemical will react to oxygen in open air, rendering it harmless 30 minutes after the bottle is unsealed. Oh. There's a more detailed description about it here. Once opened, oxidation cannot be stopped. Transferring to another sealed container will not prevent this process. Okay, I was gonna ask that question. Okay. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> they got ahead of me. Wait. There's a paintbrush near the chemical shelf. The tip of the brush is wet. What is this? There's probably not much else that can be checked in the chemistry lab. But it sure is convenient being disguised as Martina. The peacekeepers keep telling me everything. I should have taken this disguise from the start. Maybe I should keep investigating in this form. Hmm. What else should I look at? Uh, again? Staff 
room, but I think I already checked everything in there. No, I didn't check everything. There are lockers I haven't searched yet. Now that I'm disguised as Martina, I could look through everything. Okay, and this is where shit's gonna get important, and I'm gonna need to bring up the uh, footage. It's Club Locker. Cotton's name tag is on it. I have to open this for the investigation. Do you understand? Huh? I yes. Huh? There's something on the floor. It's the script for the play. Cotton's name is written on the cover. There are tons of handwritten notes. A lot of effort was clearly put into this. Hmm? There's something written in red at the Duel of Poisoned Cup scene. Take the glass, the spotlight hits first. That. Because I remember Karin he hesitating when she went to pick up the glass. I need to go back and double check the footage to show which. Because if the spotlight hit the other one first. Then both her and the person with the lights, so Karin and Karine, were both in on it. Karin must have written this. The handwriting is the same as the rest. Interesting. She definitely looked away just now. Do you have a moment? Are you the one who shoved Cotton's script into her locker? What are you talking about? I have an eyewitness account of you taking Cotton's script. <sighs> are you hiding something? If you keep hiding it, you'll be sorry later on. Don't tell me you're also hiding the chemical used in the murder. Uh, I'm not, I swear! She's definitely hiding something, but I don't think I can get anything out of her. You should pat her down and search her. Huh? A detective must suspect everything. You get to fondle a high school girl. Being the pervert you are, you'd be killing two birds with one stone. Hey, you. Check Karine's body to see if she's hiding something. Me? Wouldn't it be better for the peacekeepers to do their own investigation? But that would, uh, cause some problems. Just do as I say. Uh, I'm on it. Oh, there's something in her pocket! Th that's... A notebook. Is this a scrapbook? There are magazine and newspaper clippings in it. And all the articles are... Related to Aiko? On another page, there's a small clipping of an article about Aiko's suicide. Was she collecting everything there is about Aiko? Wait, is that... <laughs> hey, where's she going? No, it's fine. Huh? R really? In this town, she has to know that, like, doing that is basically a death sentence. Like, that's crazy. Time for a little break. It's a club locker. Lorna's name tag is on it. I have to open this for the investigation. Do you understand? Huh? I yes. Oh, right. This diary has a lock on it. I feel bad about reading someone's diary, but I need as many clues as I can get my hands on. You there. Can you call over the student named Waruna? Huh? Waruna? Sure. What do 
you want with me. Can you open this lock? That's my diary! How did you get that? That has nothing to do with what happened! Uh, I'll be the judge of that. It pains me to do this, but it might lead to a clue. I have no choice. Isn't this what a detective would do? There's no need for emotions to solve a case, right? I understand. Here's the key. I'll give it back right away. Don't worry. Oh, what's this photo? I see. Here, you can have it back. See, everyone liked the girl. Everyone liked the girl and only that girl. <laughs> Which makes me wonder then, who the fuck killed her? Was it actual suicide and everyone just blames and blames each other? Yeah, a little bit of both. You're such a naive softie. Alright, let's go back to Desahiko. Looking at the clock. One hour and 30 minutes. Boy. <laughs> Boy. I've, I need to check the audio recording. It may have been over two hours. I'm gonna have a lot of editing ahead of me. That's gonna be fun. You were unable to copy what is in my head. Put your hands up! You must be the suspicious person wandering around the crime scene. I received word of you lurking about, and here we are. Who are you? This is bad. What do I do? At this rate, both of us will be captured. Looks like you gotta surrender. And that's what you get for getting carried away. Although, if you apologize to me sincerely, I just might... Help! Somebody! What? What are you screaming for? Wh what are you... My imposter is right here! She's carrying a weapon! Genius play. On, that's the imposter! Genius play. Huh? What? This teacher and I will evacuate the premises. Eliminate that threat at once. Now the not genius play is they don't hey, run out of the now school. What do we do? I didn't think that far ahead. Let's uh go this way. As I suspected, you can't copy what's in my head after all. Now reveal your true identity, otherwise you will be shocked. <gasps> what's going on? Huh? Why is our teacher... Bless... There are two of the same peacekeeper? What is happening? 
Yoshiko, Waruna, Kurane, Kurumi too. I was so close. I almost figured out who the true culprit is. Now hurry it up. I won't give you a countdown before I pull the trigger. Wait! I'll do as you say! Genuine question here. Why do they actually go back to their proper selves? Why? <laughs> they could have just gone. They could have just become anyone. <laughs> they could have just become anyone. I see. Detectives from the Nocturnal Detective Agency. <laughs> In that case, you can both be disposed of right here and now. Wait, what? Damn, I've got no choice. What are you doing? Get out of here, Yuma! This is Ego! Have you caught Matt? Do you realize that? Help me out! <laughs> You will regret this in hell. Shigigami! Oh. Help me! I need your powers! Uh, oh. I have to! Now again, like... We're gonna solve this case, someone's gonna drop dead, and like, we aren't gonna be able to explain to people that, no, we solved the murder. Because, well, the murders, even. Because, like, it's not... <laughs> we have no actual proof, ever, of actually solving any crimes. Because people always die before we get the chance to do it. Without thinking, he didn't even get on his knees or anything. Um, well, thanks, Shinigami. You saved me. Don't mention it. After all, I'm compelled to help when people need me. Whoa! <laughs> What's this? What's going on? Whoops. Looks like we got an unwanted straggler in here. <laughs> Who are you? More importantly, where do you live? What are your hobbies? What do you think of me? Oh, would you look at that? Oh, yeah. An appropriate response. And with that, we are back to where the fuck we were. I think okay, that's four hours I have reclaimed. <laughs> I was gonna record more today, but because I had to spend four hours redoing all of that, I have a lot of editing ahead of me, so t today's an edit day now. <laughs> Today was meant to be a record day, today is now just an edit day. Alright. 